How did you get the idea for the ultimate alphabet? The idea came because the first book you probably get when you're a kid is is an ABC book, and they're usually things like A is for apple, B is for banana, and things like that, and they're just silly, very very simple things. And I just thought it'd be fun to see how far it could take it. You just take it to ridiculous lengths and see if I could get a lot more things. The, the original idea was to try and get everything in there, from uh, from from aardvark to whatever's at the end of A's. Um, but it quickly became apparent that you couldn't do that. Or if you could, it would, it's just going to take sort of so many years to do that you'd, you'd die of old age before you finish the book. So uh, I just ended up painting the most interesting things I could pick out of a list of, of words that I extracted from the dictionary. And I understand that you've read many, many dictionaries. Far too many. Uh, I certainly read the, the Oxford Dictionary from cover to cover, Webster's Dictionary, I found an Australian dictionary that I, I read from cover to cover, and out of that I just extracted all of the words that I could, and certainly all the words that would um, bear having pictures made of them, and uh, just set out to, to get as many of those as I could in any one canvas. Mm. I know that you sort of start the background, as everybody does with your paintings. Do you know before you carry on what you want in there? And then how do you work out how many goes in there? Is it just a question of doing it and then if there's any space left? I'd never work on any painting if I knew how it was going to work out or how it's going to look. The whole idea of doing a painting is, is just it's a voyage of discovery. And you take that away and there's no point in doing it if you know what it's going to look like at the end. So it's just... Uh, it's a question of starting out, changing direction, keep going to such and such a point as the painting's finished. Well, in fact, a painting is never finished. You just give up working on it. You abandon it at some point. But uh, you hope it is the point that you abandon it at is um, one that is, it, it is interesting to other people. Mm. You've got a very personal signature in as much as you'll put yourself. Is it in every painting? As far as the ultimate alphabet's concerned, yes, I think I'm in every painting there, but that's an old idea that goes right, right back to the Renaissance. You look at lots and lots of Renaissance paintings, and somewhere in there there's the, the artist looking out at you. Um, Dürer did it a lot, and um, Van Eyck and uh, Botticelli and people like that. It's just a very old idea that um, I thought it'd be fun to do. Mm. And what about the snail? What's the origin of the snail? Well, that's just a little... A joke to myself really that's how it started out it just takes me such a long long time to to make a painting that i always imagine myself painting very very slowly and uh, the snail in there is just to really goad myself into working faster and i, I never thought other people would notice it but of course <laughs> they do and now it's become a bit of a trademark and people insist on it being in the pictures how how long does it take you to do a picture or Again, is time irrelevant? You just do it until it's finished. Depends how big the picture is. You can tell how long a picture is going to take by the amount of square inches, square centimetres there are in it. I tend to paint to the same amount of detail, whatever the size. So if it's a big painting, the biggest one I painted took me two years. Smallest one I've painted took me two days, maybe. Now, one of the interesting things I found was in the introduction to the Ultimate Alphabet, and you repeat it actually on something else, I think it's page two, that looking is not seeing. And I think that's a very important thing for children to understand. Yeah, well, we, we look all the time and we look at everything around us, but we don't see it. To see something, you have to pay attention to it and sort of use your eyes to ask questions of what you're looking at. And the thing is that we don't have time to see everything. So seeing is, is looking at something and making an effort to try and understand what you're looking at. Mm. That certainly worked for me because I actually tried it a few weeks ago. And it's, it's a very strange feeling. You open a page, you think, right, I'm going to start there. And you get this explosion in your head of everything and so I started in I think the top left hand corner you know about an inch corner and even that was quite 
mind-blowing. I mean, your detail is just phenomenal. Yeah, I did use up a huge, huge amount of tiny, tiny brushes, little double zero brushes uh, that cost a fortune. And you can get through, I mean, half a dozen of those making a painting. But the, the, the detail is just, it's the result of this, this, this idea of seeing something. You look into it and you see more and more that you want to, to paint. And uh, a lot of my pictures have pictures within pictures, so it, 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 it's all to do with this, this act of, of seeing. Mm. So are you like that personally? Are you a detail person? I mean, it's quite strange. We're in your studio, which is very nice and sparse. There's lots of space until you get to look at a painting, and then it's really, really crowded. It's quite weird, actually. Yeah, um, my, my studio is very, very bare. But I have to have that. I have to have the visual equivalent of silence around me because of this cacophony that's going on inside my head. I mean, inside my head is really chaos, and everything around me has to be very um, ordered in order to cope with that. Yes, I'm going to pinch that phrase from you, because the pictures can be quite chaotic until you bar them down. And I don't believe that you could just look at the picture and get the words. If anybody can do that, they're absolutely brilliant. But for me, I would have to do it. I'd probably do it with a ruler fully, you know, do it inch by inch. Yeah, there was that. The thing about my pictures is that there's, dare I say it, there's more to them than meets the eye. You have to actually look into something and ask yourself questions about what you're looking mm. at to get the most out of them. In fact, on some of the paintings, there's things in there which people will never, ever get. Uh, for instance, all of the Braille in the pictures actually works so a blind person could go up to one of my paintings one of my ultimate alphabet paintings and tell what painting they're looking at just by feeling it do you have any favorite artists too many oh really yeah, yeah. yeah practically everything i've ever looked at has has gone in and some of it comes out but um i like all of these sort of um flemish renaissance painters but my my favorite painter i think is is Richard Dad, who was uh, mm. famous for painting fairies in in the Victorian era, but he was off his rocker. He was he mm. was start raving mad and was locked up. Mm. Um, but I love that kind of obsessive detail. Mm. 